Have you ever wondered how to control your dreams? Well, in today's video, I'm going to give you five lucid dreaming techniques aimed at dream control. So let's get started. Hi, dreamers. If you're like most people, you probably want to learn how to control your dreams. And you probably think that lucid dreaming will give you that control. And it might do, but it's really important to realise that lucid dreaming and dream control, while related, are two separate skills. Learning to know that you're dreaming while dreaming, aka lucid dreaming, is not the same as being able to control your dreams. In fact, many lucid dreamers struggle to control their dreams. So in today's video, I'm going to give you five useful techniques to help you to control your dreams. But before we go any further, remember this channel exists because of your help. So if you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe now if you're new here, and leave a comment below. And remember, you can leave a super thanks, which will guarantee that I'll answer your comments. Number five, dream magic. Now, ironically, dream magic is an advanced lucid dream control technique, but it's also how most beginners to lucid dreaming try to control their dreams. What is it? Well, it's as simple as wishing whatever you want to happen to happen within the dream world. Or, if you're a fan of something like Harry Potter, using a wand or some other magical device to attempt to control the dream. Now, there's a problem with dream magic, and that is that it's not very reliable for beginners. Why? Well, you've grown up in a world where magic isn't possible, so you have no experience of casting a spell or wishing and it coming true. So most beginners, when they're learning how to lucid dream and learning how to control their dreams, try dream magic and dream wishing and find it fails them more often than it works. Now there are some lucky individuals who this just worked for immediately, their brains are just wired in such a way, but for most people, dream magic is not a very reliable form of dream control, and it's something best left for when you're an advanced lucid dreamer. Give it a try, but there are better techniques. Number four. It's behind you. Okay, so I'm not suddenly going into pantomime. This is a legitimate lucid dream control technique. And essentially, if you want to make something happen in your dream, rather than try to change the scenery in front of you, simply believe that what you want is behind you. So this is a limited form of dream control. It's best used for creating portals or making people appear or changing the scenery in a dream. But essentially, what you're doing is rather than fighting your psychology, rather than fighting what you see with your dream eyes, you're simply believing that what's going, what, what you need to happen is behind you. And because there's an empty gap there for your mind to fill, if you genuinely believe that whatever you want to happen is behind you, whether it's someone appearing or something else, this is a reasonably reliable lucid dream control technique. So the next time you want someone to appear, or you want to create a portal, or you want to change the scenery in your dreams, imagine that it's behind you. An alternative to this is to find a doorway in the dream and to open the door and believe whatever you want is behind the door. Now, this is actually partly a more advanced lucid dream control technique, and we'll get on to the more advanced version of this later in the video. Number three, ask for help. Okay, so most of us aren't very good at asking for help in our waking lives. We're a little bit shy about it. But in the dream world, if you're struggling with dream control, why not find a dream character and ask them to do it for you? Now, this is a strange way of approaching dream control, but if you find yourself in a dream where you really can't make anything happen, often a dream character will be your key to unlock that door. Now, this is particularly true with something like reading, because a lucid dreamer can't read text in a lucid dream. So if you want to read a book in a lucid dream, the only way to do it is to ask a dream character to read it out loud to you. But you can push that even further. You can ask a dream character to help you learn to fly. You can ask them to create a portal. You can ask them to make something appear. You can ask them where someone is, for example. So. We're very social creatures, 
and engaging this social programming within the dream, especially if you find a dream character that looks like the kind of person who can help, then you're going to find that this is a very effective way of making what you want to happen happen in the dreams. But remember, the most important element is to find a dream character that looks trustworthy and you believe would have the ability for the thing you're going to ask them. Number two, reframing. Okay, so now we're getting into the meat of dream control techniques, and reframing is one of the most important dream control techniques there is. What is it? Well, essentially, it's changing your belief about the dream world. So rather than being in the dream and thinking, well, I'm in a lucid dream now, and I'm not really sure how to control it, you tell yourself something else. You give a new script to the story of what's happening to you. Now, here's an example from one of my students. One of my students was in a lucid dream and wanting to get to the other side of a very busy street. But the crowds were huge and everyone was jostling around. It was impossible to move through the crowds. So what did she do? Well, rather than try to fight the dream, she simply told herself, well, hold on, what if I reframe this to imagine that I'm on a film set and these are all actors? So that's exactly what she did. She told herself, okay, this is a film set. And then she shouted, cut, that's a wrap. And then all of the people busy in the streets went off to have a cup of coffee and a break. That's an example of reframing. Now, another example is what I used to do in my childhood. And anyone who's read my book, Are You Dreaming, will know this one. As a child, I was a big fan of Star Trek The Next Generation. And on Star Trek The Next Generation, there was something called the holodeck. Now, the holodeck was essentially a futuristic virtual reality, a room in which holograms would appear and give you the impression of being somewhere else. And you could control that virtual reality through voice control. Now, obviously, this doesn't exist in the real world, but because I'd watched a lot of Star Trek The Next Generation as a child, I kind of bought into the, uh, the storyline and, and the ethos of that world. And... So when I found myself in a lucid dream, I would just tell myself, OK, this isn't a lucid dream. I'm on the holodeck and the holodeck can be controlled through voice commands. And it was as easy as that. If I genuinely believed that it wasn't a lucid dream, but the holodeck, then I reframed the world in a way in which I could control it. So what are you doing here? Essentially, you're changing the operating system upon which the dream is running. So. Generally, in a lucid dream, you are running on waking world operating system. Your beliefs about what are possible are based on what you've learnt in the waking world. So what you're doing with reframing is you're switching out one operating system, the waking world operating system, for one which is closer to your needs. Now that can be anything. It can be a TV show, it can be a belief that you're on a film set, it could be a computer game series, it could be a series of books, whatever interests you, whatever other operating systems you have running around in your mind, you can use those in place of the waking world operating system that you use in most dreams. Number one, expectation. Okay, so this is the big daddy of dream control techniques. In fact, pretty much all lucid dream control boils down to this one thing. It's what you expect to happen. So you've spent your life being programmed by the world around you to have certain expectations. These are both conscious and subconscious. A basic one is gravity. If you pick up a ball and you drop it, you expect it to fall to the ground because that's what it's always done. Expectation is basically your, your brain's way of predicting what is likely to happen based on past events. In the dream world, expectation is the way that you control what is going to happen because dreams are essentially a kind of telepathic virtual reality. Whatever you think is going to happen will happen as long as you believe and expect it. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because, like I say, you've spent your life being programmed by the waking world, having the waking world operating system. So, you've never flown in your life. It's not something you can do. You just can't float off the ground and fly away. So, you don't really have any expectations for that. So, this is where reframing and expectation sort of work in tandem. So, if you imagine that in the dream, okay, I, I expect to be able to fly because 
I know that it's a dream and I know that anything is possible. If you can really believe that, you should be able to fly without any effort. But if you struggle, you can then fall back on reframing and say, okay, well, I don't really believe it's possible. My expectations aren't fully engaged in this. I'll try to reframe. Let's try swimming through the air because I'm used to swimming and being able to move through what appears to be invisible material. If you imagine that the air is water, then you'll reframe your belief and through reframing, you create a new expectation. You prove to yourself that something is possible. And once you're a couple of meters off the ground, your expectational programming will change because you're like, okay, now I'm floating. So my previous expectation that I couldn't fly is false. Now I expect to be able to fly because I've just broken the rules. As an experienced lucid dreamer, or as a beginner lucid dreamer who wants to become an experienced lucid dreamer, what you're really doing with lucid dream control is unprogramming or deprogramming years of expectations about what is possible. And true dream control is something that can take quite a long time to achieve. So there are those people out there who say that you get lucid and then you can immediately do anything. Technically, they're telling the truth because in a dream, anything is possible. But the problem is you trip yourself up with your own ex expectational limitations. So if you find dream control difficult, what it really means is you're, you don't believe that it's possible. You don't expect for what you want to happen to happen. So as a lucid dreamer, you need to start looking at what your expectations are and finding ways to rebuild those expectations. This is an incredibly complicated thing and it takes a lot of practice and experimentation um, and record keeping. This is why we keep things like dream journals so we can learn from our previous experiences and create new expectations. Expectation really is one of the most powerful ways, if not the only way, to control your dreams. The true secret to dream control is not really any of these previous techniques. What it really boils down to is you learning to observe the dream world, to experiment, to keep records, and to try new things. If you want to develop a genuine control of the dream world, it's a very personal thing. Because essentially, when you're walking in the world of lucid dreams, you're walking through the landscape of your own psychology. And your psychology is unique to you. What works for me, what reframing techniques, what dream control techniques work for me will not necessarily work for you because my belief systems, my expectations are very different from yours. This is where lucid dreaming boils down to essentially a very private journey. While people like to share ideas and techniques online, claiming that, that lucid dreaming has all been worked out and that there are simple techniques that work for everyone, that's not true. The human mind is incredibly complex, incredibly beautiful, um, but also mostly unknown. And every individual has their own unique psychology. So if you want to learn to control your dreams, try these five dream control techniques. But also remember, they're not set in stone. You just need to go out there and start to try new things, experiment and see what happens for you. So what's your favourite dream control technique? What do you do to control your dreams? Let me know in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here. If you want to support the channel, either become a member or leave a super thanks down in the comments. That's it for today. I'm Daniel Love, the Lucid Guide. This has been Lucid Dream Portal. And until next time, stay lucid. and ask yourself, are you dreaming? <laughs>